Uh, but that's the way the world is. They want to get tens and hundreds of millions of these things out so they can be inside your home. So you put a, a Alexa dot and uh, you now have a connection to Amazon uh, in your home. You don't have to boot up nothing. You just have to say it. So that's a, a wonderful world. It's, it's scary. It's Big Brother, okay? Yes. But you're not going to avoid Big Brother. Not, I don't know what you're Big thinking. Monster. <laughs> Big brother. Uh, I don't know. Big Privacy brother. is really important to us, <laughs> yeah. okay? But look at you look at all the um, uh, just the cameras mm. that are out there. I mean, you Absolutely. can't do nothing without being seen. Yeah, so so you trying to hide? It's going to be really hard to hide right. in the future. But the benefit is it's the convenience is going to be like absolutely amazing and from what we want to do is deliver a uh, impactful experience uh, with sound with music that nobody else can do and I think we've succeeded with our headphones and with the speakers I want to ask just a couple more questions um, you spoke as we're speaking of the internet of things what is your play with the auto manufacturers being that that's also you know when we're talking about autonomous cars and now this creates a new economy in which it's no longer just driving the car but now new things that i could do in route from point a to point b audio will play a role in that where do you see the monster brand going with working with maybe the manufacturers well listen automobile sound you know went through a whole metamorphosis where you know everybody was putting in aftermarket sound systems and you got that big boomy bass and all that and then uh, it tailed off and the uh, manufacturers put their own sound systems in okay and uh, that was just the beginning today we're at the ground floor I believe of a revolution of audio in a car and I'll tell you why first of all you got the e-car and an electric car is dead ass silent. Okay, so you now have a environment that's like unbelievable that you never had before. You didn't, you know, you, all you got is like road noise, but the engine doesn't make any noise. So the music will sound better. Two, you got auto driving. Okay, and when you auto drive, what are you going to do? You, they're not going to let you watch a movie. Okay, but you can listen to phenomenal sound. So we developed a, a what we call a pure monster sound, a car stereo system that we're now talking to uh, some big manufacturers of putting it in. And it's like the best sounding audio system you've ever heard in your life. And if you were to put that sound system in a home, it costs you at least $50,000. Good Lord, that's a lot of money. But the sound stage... Uh, right up on the dash, the instruments, the clarity, the dynamics. And we showed it, the CES, just a few weeks ago to the industry, and they were just flabbergasted. Okay, so we have that unique technology, again, from all the stuff that we do with our headphones and speakers, but we applied it to the automobile. But uh, you're absolutely right in saying this is an integral part of the Internet of Things. Because your second home is your car. I mean, how many hours does one spend in traffic today? And it's not getting any better, right? It's getting longer. Uh, and the e-car and auto driving, you know, this is uh, that's why I said we're, I believe we're at the ground floor. And the audio systems, especially hopefully with us leading it, will get better and better and better. Right now, it's a good stereo, okay? But it's not the best audio you've ever heard in your life. Okay, and that's uh, what we're trying to reproduce. Nice. So there's been, there's a buzz, rumor, it's on social media. Uh, we got the Super Bowl coming up, and I need to hear from you direct. Monster being involved? Uh, we are more than involved. I'm, I'm up to my eyeballs in hock <laughs> right now trying to pay for the Super Bowl ad. But look at Super Bowl... And Super Bowl ads are reserved for the top, 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 you know, Fortune uh, 500, Fortune 100 companies of the world, right? True. And it's such an honor for us to, first of all, be uh, in that club. Right. You know, having started in my garage, uh, you know, I'm still a single uh, owner. Uh, and, you know, f to elevate our little company... Uh, to a stature where 
we can be eligible for a Super Bowl commercial. And it's not about the money. You know, there's other people who got the money. There's only nine companies being uh, uh, available to be putting their commercial in. And it's scrutinized, scrutinized, scrutinized. Everybody who's in the commercial, uh, everybody who is uh, uh, the topic and everything has to be such uh, purity, okay, according to the NFL mm. and the uh, 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 NBC Universal who's producing us. Right. So I had no idea. I had no idea. So it's like a process. Just It's not like you're writing a vetting commercial. process. A vetting. Yeah, hey, hey, vetting it, writing a check is right. the easier part, okay? And there's a, 1,000 can do that. There's a whole line of right. people who are ready to write that check because it's – you reach everybody, right? You reach every politician. You reach every celebrity, every sports figure, well, uh, every I, ad agency. I look at it with the Super Bowl. It's the, it's the Oscars of commercials. It's when you're watching the halftime outside of the football game, you are actually geared for those commercials. You're going to see something revolutionary that you haven't seen. It sets the tone for the rest of the year. So. Well, look at that. And there are good Super Bowl commercials yeah. that are not so good. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you got some companies who run them every year and they run multiple uh, uh, commercials. Budweiser. Yeah, well, I didn't want to say it, okay, but but yeah, you always want to see the next Bud commercial, right. but you know they're going to be there yes. with three or four commercials. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But they got the money. That's Budweiser. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. not Little Monster. Right. Okay, so for us, I, I, I love it because uh, we're representing uh, Asian American business, small business, minority business, uh, in a lot of ways uh, the handicapped uh, population to where – you know, the little guy has made it, and so it's, uh, like I say, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> My savings, everything, you know, we're all in. Uh, but we got to go to the next level, you know what I mean? So this is how a uh, small company becomes, hopefully, a big company. And, you know, we're not Amazon, we're not Yahoo, we're not uh, uh, Google. We're, we're fortunate enough to have invented a technology that gets bought by some big players and they right. take you public and they uh, make you a real company. We're not that fortunate. We're kind of like that hobbyist, enthusiast, uh, you know, energetic, entrepreneurial company that will probably ruin us if we ever became like huge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but we need to be in that space and we're right at the top of. Uh, being uh, that entrepreneurial company who made it, so I'm very uh, proud That's of it all. Step. Yeah. Step. What could you give us uh, any insight of what that commercial may look like? Oh What's man, that What's commercial! This commercial who's is. In it? By the way, this who's commercial in it? is epic. Well, first of all, uh, we have a lot of uh, influencers in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, uh, DJ Ari, Pooh Bear. Uh, mm-hmm. We got. Uh, um, Big uh, Kenny, country uh, western singer. We got Iggy Azalea. Uh, so it's a varied uh, group. I even have uh, who plays young Noel Lee, because uh, it's kind of my history, uh, is a gentleman named uh, Ricegum. He's, he's a 21-year-old YouTube influencer, has 10 million followers. So what I wanted, the, the object of the game was to have at least one person that you would recognize. Okay, so dad's not going to uh, recognize rice gum, and the kids aren't going to recognize, uh, you know, uh, Big Kenny, right? Right, right. But somebody's going to recognize somebody. So yeah. it's going to be epic. Uh, we're going to be rolling the uh, campaign out from NBC Universal, mm-hmm. who actually helped us to do this, because I never advertised. Right, right. I've never done a TV advertising, barely have done uh, any kind of a magazine ad, so... You know, it's you know, how to say, you know, go big or go home. Right. Hello. <laughs> so we're going big because yeah. <laughs> we ain't going home. Straight up. Uh, it's a uh, big, big risk for us, but the commercial is epic. I mean, it looks like a, uh, a movie. You know, it's only a 30 second or maybe it's going to it all stretch into a minute. But it's, uh, it's so well done. But, you know, it took 100 people to put the uh, commercial to produce it. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, one of the days, we had 500 people on the set. It was like, holy, it's like a little city to do a 30-second spot. I had no idea 
how intricate or uh, how uh, demanding it was to meet all of the you know the cinematography, the extras, the the lighting, the you know, and everything is uh, you know a little workshop. Every little piece uh, had to be curated and all that. Holy moly! I should, that is, I should get. We should get some kind of Oscar or you know nice. Golden Globe or something. Nice, nice. So I want to wrap up with just asking you this question: Where do you see Monster in twenty twenty? Well, look at Monster is uh, one of these brands that when I started, there was only one Monster that was the Cookie Monster. But today, there's over three thousand Monster companies. Uh, you know, I go overseas, I'll see Monster Ice Cream, Monster Sushi. I mean, it's mon- Monster Hot Dogs, Monster How did Hamburgers. How you come up with the name? Well, because the, the little cable we had, uh, and what I did was make big cable, mm-hmm. and, I, and the sound of the cable was unbelievable. I mean, you could not believe how much uh, the little cable was robbing you of sound. Mm-hmm. You kind of a big, uh, in those days, a 400-watt phase linear amplifier, and you're running it through a little straw. Right. Okay, so we opened that up, and the sound was, boom, powerful. You got more bass, got more dynamics, you got more power, you got uh, uh, better clarity. And that's what started it all. And so uh, I wanted to have a name that kind of uh, personifies what you're going to hear. Okay, and that's... Uh, uh, people thought I was crazy with that name when I started, but now everybody wants to name their yeah, company's Monster. Monster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Monster.com, yeah. Monster Garage, Monster yeah, Energy, so you name it. So true. I want to thank you so much for your time, even as time to tell your story. I think one thing that holds dear is that you're an inspiration speaking on for minorities uh, of all shades, of all colors, especially in this Donald Trump era. <clears throat> uh, I look forward to the commercial. I know we all look forward to the commercial, uh, and we wish you continued success. Love the fact that you're tech-driven. You've always been embracive of it. All the best. All right, man. Thank you so so much.